With the launch of 3.20, we've got the Hull C. Let's talk about where this ship is currently and where we see it in the future. And maybe if you buy it with real money, what the hit on the wallet is as well. So the Hull C is extraordinarily large. We're talking about 4,608 SCU of cargo area. To try to put that into terms, it's the size of most capital ships cargo area, if not larger than some. And you have to remember that the size of the current star citizen economy will really not offer this ship a full loadout in many locations. And it's more meant for longer haul trucking, so to speak. Probably the closest routes that you can picture is think of something like Microtech to Hurston and then connect from Hurston, buying a whole bunch of stuff there to, say, heading all the way over to Arc Corp. So you kind of want to bounce around the system and start planning routes that are like triangles or squares uh, and give the economy time to kind of recover from your work. Uh, during the release of this, it should be noted that a ton of animation work has been done to allow these massive spines that you're looking at in this video uh, to get going. And that will certainly keep the crew of four very occupied. I don't think this ship will often have a crew of four, even though it's listed on the sail page as a four crew ship. Also note that it has 67 MS as of its launch speed. Uh, so that's, um, its top speed is rather slow, ex extraordinarily slow, which should help when you're trying to uh, get close to the car new cargo decks on the stations. I'm gonna have another video on that in a while, uh, but uh, it should help in that situation, but certainly not help when you're saying, trying to outrun pirates or something like that. In some of the B-roll you see in the video, in the, I should say in the trailer, uh, you, you see it standing next to javelins and such, and that's not going to stand up very long. This ship should try to avoid uh, combat like the plague and um, should be before or after a fight happens, resupplying and such. It's a very large ship for its capabilities. Um, and I do believe that a two crew or even three crew would be certainly plausible. And I, I think that this ship is meant to be in that kind of sweet spot. In the Q&A, they mention that ships that are size three and above items are intended to be removed by players via tractor beams. So they will be swapping things out such as components and everything else on this ship with said tractor beams. Additionally, the ship enjoys multiple tractor beams to work getting items off of its spindles. I noticed a comment on another video that was talking about the Hull C that was asking about the use of tractor beams to kind of retrofit the ship or put more weapons on there. I think there, there just needs to be a clarification here that really the tractor beams that are uh, when the spindles are opened up and you're, you have those beautiful tractor beams on nice angles in multiple directions, people can remotely operate those tractor beams to work cargo. And that's really their number one need. Even if they can help kind of change components, that's not really what they're meant for. They're meant for the cargo. So when we talk about buying and selling, it'll be through the same system and what CIG says in the Q&A is, for now, I think that the admin center usages when you go to the the different stations will change over time. And I, 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 I believe that the way, the way they worded that as for now, there will be kind of a cargo deck specific thing. There will be private entities that also have their own setups, not like a... a uh, a specific admin office that the uh, you know the owners of the station basically run and that's it uh so kind of give us some dyna some some differences and also allow for player organizations to start slowly kind of wandering into this they're going to have their own hangers you'll do large deliveries too and uh it will be interesting to see how that works when that finally comes in eventually but for now this ship is not really meant for anything more than what it does it goes between off loading and unloading cargo in different places, preferably longer hauls than usual, and trying to maximize its capabilities with its large, large amount of cargo. 
Uh, what was also mentioned in the Q&A is there will not be multiple types of cargo containers. There will be different sizes, but one of the things noted was that there won't be, uh, early on, there won't be like armored ones and exotic different styles, but over time that will be coming up. And um, once again, you will use those four different tractor beams to kind of pop things on and off of the Hull C, which is currently now in game. Um, I, I think it would be really interesting to see over time if we will be able to deploy ships on the side of this thing and they can just rapidly leave, but, uh, that's not really the intention at this time. And these are just purely cargo grids for now. Now we have seen, uh, concept art in the past that was meant to show like a flat pack ship, so to speak. Like think of like a, a, a 100i or a 300i series ship uh, just kind of sitting inside a container that may, be, may or may not be visible from the outside, but it's not meant to be like a rapidly deployable ship to defend the ship. Um, I hope in the future that especially for the hull D and E that that changes when you start talking about that larger scale. Uh, I've also heard some theory crafting that the Furies may be an excellent use case for all of the hull C, D, E uh, acting as like these uh, point defense kind of snub fighter type things that kind of are able to squeeze in somewhere, regardless if it's official or not. And that's actually a theory I would love to test. Uh, the Fury is so small and it is a very uh, uh, unique ship for that role where it doesn't have giant wings or anything else that can really block it in. So I'm not going to weigh in on that right now but i certainly will gladly test that with anybody willing to let me uh, toy around with that concept and um if, if i'll do it myself if no one else is willing to test it and blow up with me <laughs> so uh they, there is some interesting stuff when you're talking about unloading and loading as a reminder uh there is uh special rules in armistice zones where tractor beams only work in hangars so they basically, enemies will be able to go in uh, and pull the cargo off with a tractor beam if they shoot open the doors. And that is about the only way they can really get in there. Now, as a reminder, when you're in an armistice zone, you can't shoot. So somebody would have to be outside of the armistice zone and kind of shoot open the doors to a cargo container and then attempt, then they can finally use a... Uh, the methodology to pull things off, um, you know, uh, take the hull C itself completely out of the zone. Um, it's messy. So I think that um, if we start finding cargo containers laying around all over the place, uh, can the cargo containers themselves be stolen and can they be taken different places? Um, for example, are there no questions asked terminals available for the hull C for pirate salvagers to take advantage when selling recovered cargo? And CIG's answer is not at this time. So uh, there's a couple different questions of ownership of the container and tracking of that and being able to uh, control that, that, that container uh, will all be uh, really messy, I think, at first. Uh, but over time, we will work through these issues. Just like over time, we'll get different kinds of containers with different armors and changes to capacity and special special storage capacities uh, for, for for different things. Um, and reminder, we are, we are not talking about loading this thing up with fighters and just sending them on a merry way where it can rapidly deploy. Yet again, uh, that is not a thing on this ship at this time. Uh, for defenses, the turrets have a single set of firing arcs regardless of the, spinless, the spindles. In the closed state, all turrets can fire towards the majority of a 360 arc on the upper side. The underside of the hull sea is more vulnerable and only attackers coming from front underside will be within the turret's firing range, so it's recommended to plan ahead for encounters. Uh, having limitations on the turrets makes a lot of sense. And I think that enemies will find those sweet spots to come in from below on the hull C and players will want to think defensively. One of the reasons I don't think four crew in many cases would be smart on the hull C is because I'd rather see somebody tagging along in a Vanguard or some other long range capable fighter like a super Hornet 
and be able to kind of wander around. And when I say long range, I mean like long range in our current aspects of the game, where really you're only moving across the system, you can refuel at the next stop, and you can help defend. Remember, a, a mantis can pull this thing out of its warp, and its quantum capabilities are uh, gonna be slow. This thing's meant to be slow, it's meant to be a thing. Now, and you still need to test that, this didn't come up in the questions, but can we upgrade the quantum drive on this thing and really kind of change that up a little bit? Because I'm less less worried about the sluggish maneuvering when you finally get to a destination. That is what it is. You're going to have that risky time where you're running to the armistice zone and then maneuvering to the cargo area. Um, but uh, and that's all time is money, of course. But the real time for me that's going to seem to be make or break this ship for me is going to be sitting in quantum that much longer than anyone else. That's time that could be you could shave minutes off a route. And over time, when we get to much longer routes that are like between systems, I could see this thing being shaving 15 minutes off an ex off a turnaround and uh that's time the ship could be doing other jobs or getting that badly needed ammunition to an outpost or whatever it is that you're trying to do uh the, the c2 to me is a more of a faster mover ship and that's kind of where i'm going but um i want to note the differences between this kind of ship and any other hauler um when i think of this ship I, I start thinking of, well, the cat can do this. The C2 can do that. And they all are effective in this circumstance. And see, it, none of that matters when you're talking about the differences in scale. 500 or so SCU on a C2 and M2 is like in the 400s. This thing's in the 4600s, 4608 uh, SCU is, is incredible. Now, that all comes at a cost. Um, once again, a crew cost where you cannot really skeleton crew this. At the very least, you would need two people to really do much at all with this ship. And really, you should have additional protection keeping an eye on you, if at all possible. Um, um, the other cost, if you're going to uh, pick it up out of game, is uh, it's jumped up dramatically. The What used to be considered the little hull C of the series, the mid-size hull, the hull C, um, has gone from 200 USD to 300, 350, and now it's sitting at 500 value at USD. And um, Warbond, Warbond is 450. This is a incredible jump in price and an indication of the entire hull series will slide upwards. At the very least, the hull D and E will slide upwards right after this. So expect, expect at IAE a price jump of the hull D and E. So if you are <laughs> looking around, it may even be better just to pick up a CCU to a hull D or E if any are left on whatever service or if you have a friend in your org or whatever, not that I'm advocating for anything specific, uh, whatever trustworthy thing you can get your hands on one or if you have one sitting in buyback, Now's the time to take a hard look at those CCUs for the hull D and the hull E because they're going to be forced to go up to kind of have any sense of, of, of normalcy with this price points, um, in my opinion. Now, how much will they go up? You know, not by much, maybe 50 USD. When we're starting to talk about these scalings um, and a lot of people are playing with store credit that they're kind of jumping around ship to ship, um, it's not the end of the world. I wouldn't drop everything, but I would take a hard look at what you have options wise. Uh, on the on the whole, I think this ship is a game changer. It is an organizational level ship. It's one of the first haulers that truly is a pure hauler that still is an org level ship. Uh, I, I think that you're going to have a hard time kind of filling this thing with just NPC to NPC sales. And uh, because other people will be doing it and you're going to need to server hop quite a few times to get this thing full. Also, note that with 3.20 in the patch notes, they, they finally brought it out. Uh, there is a notice that combat logging is no longer a thing. You will get a warning uh, telling you that if you log out, you will still remain for some, quote, short period of time. And um, that means a lot. That means you probably will lose your ship when you log. So it's better to fight to the end or try to negotiate out of the situation. Um, on a ship with exposed cargo, such as a hull C, it may be 
more plausible to tractor beam off a specified number of containers in negotiation and then go in your merry way. Uh, just some advice. You take it what you will. Uh, some more advice back to the sale. Stay away from the packs. They only have six months insurance. Um, and the only one that does not have that is the concierge hull series pack, which is a blistering 1950 USD right now. So it is just... <laughs> It is incredible how much these things are going up in price. And um, there's really not much extras that come with this. There is no concierge paint for the Hull C. Uh, there is one for the brand new Mer Fury LX Racing Edition, the Black Star paint. But there is no um, uh, concierge paint for the Hull C. There is three different paints, the Dusk, Horizon, and the Empyrean. The Empyrean is quite the most eye-catching. It's a beautiful two-tone, high contrast with a little bit of a gold stripe in it. Um, and I, I think out of the three, that one really caught my eye. I'm curious to see what these look like spindled open. Um, they actually, once again, this, this ship is changing a lot of things. This is one of the few ships I'm looking at, and it's just as important to see what it's like when it's open versus closed. And the paints, for example, are all closed when you look at them. When you look at the store pictures, most of them are closed, which I find interesting. Um, another interesting dynamic of this sale, the Q&A, the launch of it, is that they're kind of strapping it to the Hull A. The Hull A has a link here too, and it's also up for sale. So if you've missed out on the Hull A, you can go check that out. They also have a pack that has both. But once again, like I said before, do not get the pack. The pack is only has six months insurance. And um, on the actual page itself, on the store page, literally at the at the front it's giving you different routes cig is already predicting that you're going to have issues filling this ship and they're trying to show you the dynamics between a larger hauler and a smaller hauler and how the uh the kind of the hauling ecosystem is going to shape up for the 3.20 and i would assume the 3.20.1 patch cycle um We've already confirmed that there's a dot one coming, but uh, it's just a matter of if the uh, trade sequences will stay the same. And I hope that Tony Z and his crews are uh, paying close attention to all this because uh, as we keep getting further and further into development, the Quanta system should be coming online. And these economy notes, while right now it's not truly uh, that way, it should be slowly but surely give them a nice, nice big amount of data to kind of follow up with. And that's kind of where I'm going to leave it. Um, the Hull C, this is kind of a first look, kind of look at the sale. Should you get it? Should you not? I think you know if you're that person, if you truly want this. It's an org level asset. If somebody already has one, I would recommend jumping on their crew, checking it out, feeling it out, following along with a defensive ship and kind of chatting along with them. See if it's really your speed before you jump head first into this type of ship. Uh, this is truly a different level of hauler. I think for many, it will be a buy-in game, certainly. And also remember, if you already have a Hull D, Hull E, this will obviously go on the loaner list very soon. So bear that in mind as well. Don't uh, get into the hype machine too much and um, over-invest into the Hull series where you have all of your credit tied up into just hulls, unless you're really that big onto space trucking. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that, but just remember that's kind of where you're setting yourself up for. I've seen many people uh, on the fleet pictures and some that I've done reviews for and chatted with and folks that have said like, oh, I, I didn't really th realize that I had so many small ships or I had so many haulers. Um, and they tend to be like two of the pockets of places where you can really burn through some cash very quickly, especially because a lot of ships don't seem like they're purest haulers or close to pure haulers until you have them for a while and you realize, oh, I'm only pulling this out because I need to move vehicles or cargo. <laughs> and um, this thing is, the, is, is definitely on that kind of spectrum where you really are only breaking this out to move tons of cargo. And um, remember, there are some cap ships that can carry as much as this. Uh, if your org already is sitting on a pile of Krakens, for example, especially vanilla Krakens, um, it, it's about the same scale of hauling, at least based on how last we've seen that poor ship. Um, we'll see how CIG kind of shapes that up when it finally comes out. Uh, but for now, uh, and the BMM as well, by the way, 
Uh, but for now, um, this is one of this is the only ship in the game that is truly going to put the cargo decks into uh, overdrive, trying to keep up with it. And I can't wait to see a few of these with their tick down timers going next to stations, just uh, loading up on the good stuff. All right, that's what I have on this one. I wish you all the best and good luck with 3.20 and see you out there. Not so fast. Because this uh, soft crashed once and then hard crashed so hard the project is unopenable. Uh, both times trying to render this, I had some time and the loner ship matrix was updated. So the hull C is now a loner for the hull D, the hull E, and that was predicted. However, I did not expect it so quickly. And it's also a loner for the Banu Merchantman. Now, I got to say that it is kind of a letdown that the, uh, the Javelin, the Idris, the Krakens, etc. None of those have it, but it is nice to see that the Pure Haulers and also the Merchantmen, which could have used some help, uh, all enjoy the wonderful, wonderful Hull C. And the Endeavor does not get it, unfortunately. And that brings me into another point. Shout out to Suspicious Potato uh, for bringing this up. Uh, the Endeavor, to me, is still in a place where um, it's kind of a long-term hold, and I will say that for a lo much longer time. It would take a lot more to sway my opinion of the Endeavor. In fact, more than ever, as long as the Endeavor price does not come up at IAE, I just have a hard time leaving it alone. Uh, when you're talking about a 10 USD CCU from the Starfarer Gemini uh, and from a plenty of other ships in that same price category in the 200 USD plus range, um, being able to quietly upgrade from a Connie all the way up to a capital ship, for example, for a very reasonable price. Uh, to give you an idea, I just CCU'd a Fury, to a Fury LX from my referral STV and picked up the 5 USD skin, and that cost me 21 USD to do so. It doesn't have a serial number plate, by the way. Only the Warp-On variant has that for the new Fury LX. But, I mean, an entire cap ship you can hold on to a price point for. And even if, let's say, oh, I don't want to spend the initial amount of money to even get to a Star G or whatever it is by that price time, you can make a deal with an org mate and give them that. They'd be incredibly grateful. At the very least, they'd be willing to give you the 10 USD uh, trade-wise. Not that I'm advocating for anything specific or gray market or anything, but um, I don't think you're going to lose out on these smaller things, especially on uh, purchased items that are giftable. Um, if you bought it with credit, you can always just melt it. No harm, no foul. You have that 10 USD. You can spend it on half of a racer upgrade from a referral. <laughs> I mean, that's really where we're at is a snub fighter is at the 50 USD price point and it doesn't even have weapons because it has the extra thrusters and it is a very cool ship, et cetera, et cetera. But just remember what we're talking about. So as things price go up and up and up, they teach me more and more that ships like the Endeavor are truly valuable. Additionally, remember to hang on to your CCUs for other ships as well, because you never know when these prices are going to go up. We have general ideas, and I always try to, first and foremost, put them right at the front of my videos that cover those topics. But uh, they're more of pricing trends that can happen between now and three years from now. So my general advice is to try to hang on to CCUs uh, because the price will get jacked up when you, even when it's sitting in your buyback. But things like armor sets uh, for your character, ship paints, those type of things are very safe to put into buyback because the prices are about what they're going to be forever um, within reason. I mean, they might go up slightly, but we're talking about dollars here uh, pounds here, uh, euros here. Uh, we're not talking about a situation where they're going to skyrocket in value um, suddenly, and then you have to buy them back for significant amounts, and you'll want to, you know. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, once again, the Hull C is yet another ref uh, re ref reformer uh, mention on the old school heavy CCUs on larger ships, and it's not even that large of a ship it does one thing 
that larger ships can offer. A BMM, for example, can bring an entire multi-store mall with it. It can bring trade hub. It can bring a significant amount of HABs for an entire organization. It has huge weapon systems on board, and it can defend itself very well. It has an entire hangar. And a hull C just can match it on its hauling capacity, just on its cargo bay capacity. Um, so just to put things in perspective, I'm not saying that it's, I'm not trying to pick on the Hull C. I'm just saying, and it is very cool. It can transform and it is a very unique ship, but just remember that right now it is an exciting ship over time. It's going to be a very common ship. In fact, uh, Chris Roberts himself has said that it should be the most common ship in the game, at least if we're still following the older comments that have been made by him and multiple devs about the Hull C and about how important it is to the economy. It will be a very easy to purchase ship in game. And it will probably be a great goal to work towards for your haulers. But if you are that person who enjoys hauling constantly, as I said earlier in this video, I highly recommend it. Um, I just it's a very bitter pill to swallow this higher and higher price point because it seems to be pricing newer folks out of these dynamics of like medium and larger ships to enjoy them and truly experience maybe the type of gameplay they're looking for without having to constantly worry about server wipes uh, by buying things in game. Uh, as the game stabilizes and as the in-game economy grows, I think things will change more for purchasing in-game as much as possible, especially because ores can pull money. Don't forget, there's only a tiny tax to send stuff between players in-game. Uh, so you can ship your UEC back and forth, and you can pull resources to buy a ship like the Hull C, and then pay it forward by getting helping someone else earn their own Hull C and, and whatnot, and defensive ships to protect these and escort them and start building small convoys. That sounds like an awesome Friday night. And I, I mean, that's kind of the thing I'm thinking of is like, I, I, I do see these type of ships as the backbone of an organization. But for real world money, we're starting to get more and more into I'm looking hard at that loaners list and going, what can I get for a reasonable price that's like a loaner? Like, for example, the Hull D. First of all, based on the fact that they had recently up, they just they just updated the ship loaner list to have the Hull C. I'm, 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 whew, whew, I'd be sweating if I was trying to pick up a Hull D uh, for IAE. I'd be looking, I'd be really tapping the vines and trying to find friends and and uh, work mates and, and friends of, from other orgs maybe that I could find a Hull D CCU from ASAP right now. <laughs> uh, now that we're seeing these, uh, because having a Hull C as a loaner for your Hull D would really set you up for now and then the future. The same for the Hull E, but that's obviously even higher of a price point and makes it far less of a, a, a comparison that's like, okay, this is so close in price point right this moment that this is really exciting, you know, that moment. Uh, I would not be shocked at the Hull D and E go uh, jump up in price literally just due to the concept of this loner thing and keeping the price point separated enough, much like when the 100i got rolled in, the 300 series kind of went right on up. The 100i needed space, the 125 needed space, the 135. And that's the one benefit of the Hull C is they didn't bring out a militarized variant, at least initially. Um, and the Q&A says like they're not working on armored versions yet uh for the even the cargoes i wouldn't have been shocked if they had a, a ue navy variant much like the star gemini having like a the equivalent of a hull c gemini whatever they wanted to call that that had like armored cargo that takes a little less ccu but it's it's got armored up maybe it has a missile pod or two or maybe even dare i say it a pds a single pds on this ship would greatly increase its survivability defensively obviously it can't bully other ships but it's missing uh it's certainly missing that as, as a nice little thing anyway that's my two cents i am finally done hopefully i am out of rendering uh the rendering trap for real this time i wish you all a wonderful time good luck and enjoy 3.20 don't forget to hit me up um, I'm on Discord. I'm also in game. Uh, and of course, I'm always welcome in the comments section below. Please like this video if, if you appreciated this. And in the comments, I don't just read the positives. I also read the negatives. I try to take things to, uh, to, to, to the next videos and make them as good as possible. Fly safe.